ask us all to rise for the pledge. Mr. Graff. Here. Mayor Nyer. Mr. Wilson. Here. Ms. Knopf. Here. Mr. McMurdo. Here. Motion to excuse. I move yes. we excuse Mayor because he's on a company business. Yes. I second that. Uh, Ms. Knopf. Yay. Mr. McMurdo. Yay. Mr. Graff. Yay. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Yay. And uh, have we all had a chance to review the minutes of our February 14th meeting? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept those. I'll second it. Mr. Graff? Yay. Mr. Wilson? Yay. Ms. Knock? Yay. Mr. McMurdo? Yay. Okay. Um, at this point, I think we've heard from all of our visitors. We've got no old business. Um, and again, I'd like to uh, thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight. Um, I. I hope I speak for the rest of our board here. Um, I, I love living in a community where people care this much. Um, first, we've got a plat approval. Uh, this is a plat approval brought before us by Cincinnati ISH LLC. Um, so all proposed record plats are approved by Planning Commission. This location is 10035 West Road. Um, the applicant is requesting approval of a plat that clearly identifies the area to the west of parcel A to allow for future public improvements. On the east boundary, the applicant is preserving the initial egress easement that was recorded in 2017. Um, the background on this is the applicant split the existing parcel into five parcels for future sale or development in 2017. Parcel A to have direct access from West Road, parcel B, D, and E has access from the ingress and egress easement between the lots and parcel C has direct access from Corner Brook Road. In summary, the plot has been reviewed by the city engineer and approved as meeting the standards for boundary surveys as defined in chapter 4733 through 37 of the Ohio Administrative Code. Building and zoning staff has reviewed the application and recommends approval with the condition that the road width meets the city standard. I mean, do we have anyone here on that one? No, they were here and are not here anymore. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that, but my thought, um, I, I think this makes sense, and I think they're just trying to convey to reconfigure um, and, and move some future roadway or future easement areas to adjoining parcel owners. Um, I would my thought on this is as long as they um, these are permanently tied to one of the existing neighboring parcels and not a separate parcel that I think I'm fine with it I don't know if anyone else had any thoughts Wilson moves for approval I will second it Mr. McMurdo um yay with the conditions that Andy Mr. Graff? Yay. Mr. Wilson? Yay. Ms. Knock? Yay. Okay. Next, we have uh, 400 Harrison Avenue, the laundromat. Joanna, if you could read the staff report, please. Uh, yes, this was part of the public hearing. Um, all proposed conditional uses are reviewed by Planning Commission and for approval per section. Oh, wait a minute, I'm on the wrong one. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, all proposed conditional uses in the downtown redevelopment district are reviewed by planning commission and city council for approval per section 114307 of the Harrison zoning regulations. This property is at 400 Harrison Avenue. Um, the applicant is requesting a conditional use approval to open a 24 hour laundromat at this location. The application must be reviewed and approved by planning commission and city council, um, which states conditional uses that require 
Planning Commission and City Council approval number six, any other use determined by the Planning Commission and City Council to be similar to those uses listed within this section. Uh, there is no use within this section, which is why we're here for a conditional use. The building at 400 Harrison was previ previously a service station um, that has been vacant for several years. The applicant is proposing to open a 24-hour laundromat to serve the residents of the downtown area. There will be 15 to 20 machines installed in the space for use on a self-serve basis. Um, the owner of the location sees the conditional use request as an asset to the downtown by providing a service to people within walking distance of where they live. Approval of the conditional use will require building and zoning permits to be reviewed and approved per the Harrison Zoning Re Regulations for the downtown redevelopment district. Um, the applicant did not at this time provide information related to the interior floor plan, um, the vehicular pedestrian ways or parking areas, landscape areas, information regarding any color changes or exterior improvements. Um, in looking at 114707 purpose, um, the purpose of the DRD is to provide and encourage further expansion and renewal in the historical core business area of the city. A variety of business, institutional, public, semi-public, cultural, and other related uses are encouraged in an effort to provide the mix of activities necessary to maintain a walkable retail environment. The emphasis for street level downtown business should be retail and food establishments. Those businesses that substantially increase retail foot traffic during regular business hours are highly encouraged. Uh, while there is a laundromat located at 490 South State Street, that business was already in place when the district boundaries were expanded to that area. Also, a laundromat was approved by Planning Commission at 202-204 North State Street in 2019 as part of a combination drive through laundromat restaurant concept. The laundromat portion was to have abbreviated hours in not 24 hours. Since the latter concept was never completed, the owner will have to resubmit an application for consideration of the new concept in order to begin. Uh, both of the two properties described above on State, Street, on State Street are not within what is considered as the core retail area of the first four blocks of downtown. A laundromat at 400 Harrison Avenue is not an approved use of Section 1147 and does not fulfill the intent purpose as described above for the historical business area and does not add to the retail environment. Um, furthermore, the request for an unattended 24-hour operation is outside the permitted hours for the DRD businesses. Planning Commission and City Council have recently considered the hours of operations for DRD businesses as they relate to the impact upon residents of the area, choosing to limit hours to 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. If Planning Commission makes a positive recommendation to City Council for conditional use for a laundromat at 400 Harrison Avenue, uh, we recommend the following items be required as conditions of the approval. Interior floor plan to scale will be provided um, and approved by building and zoning before any interior renovations begin. A design for ve vehicular and pedestrian ways, parking areas, and landscaping will be provided and completed before an occupancy permit is granted. Uh, the broken pr concrete will be replaced with new concrete as part of the parking landscape area. Color changes and exterior improvements will be submitted and approved by building and zoning and completed before occupancy permit is issued. The business would be operated only during their permitted open hours in the DRD. Uh, the applicant will submit an interior and exterior lighting plan to be approved and installed before an occupancy permit is issued. Surveillance cameras will be installed inside and out and record activities at the property within 72 hours of recorded footage maintained for police review if needed. Windows installed to allow police to drive by and see in easily as part of the exterior improvements submitted. An emergency slash panic button installed inside with an emergency beacon. And all of the above items will be maintained to retain an occupancy, will be, sorry, will be maintained to retain an occupancy permit. And that is that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any comments on that? Yes, um, thank you, Shannon. I'll get that uh, on the mic. Um, we were also presented with um, a letter from the DRD board um, who recommended or who asked that we deny this request. Do we have a uh, definition of retail? Uh, yes, it is in the book. In, in the book?
Dressmaking, tailoring, bakery, uh, restaurants, studios related to music and art and crafts, banks and other financial institutions, barbershop, beauty salons, pet grooming, governmental offices, print shops, walk-up windows and counters for outside service, preventive for banks and uh, ice cream parlors and coffee shops, restaurants and pubs that serve alcohol. Conditional because it it doesn't okay. As a resident of the the DRD, I actually um, pulled the my surrounding neighbors, and um, none of them were in favor of this type of business. Only blocks within us, especially twenty four hours. So I I will recommend that we deny this application. Yes, we, it, again, I was going to say, what, what we have here is a situation where we're making a recommendation, mm -hmm. so um, <coughs> would, would that be a, a rec or a, a making motion to, to disapprove, mm -hmm. re recommendation that council disapprove, correct? Right, okay. right, so. Right, so that would be a, a motion to dis disapprove. Oh, so we it can't make a motion. To, it would be a motion to approve, okay. but then everyone would vote yay or nay. Got it. Got okay. It. Okay. All right. So, Can I speak okay. to his question? Can I speak to his question? I think his question was, how do we define retail? I'd love to know the answer to that question. Walk-in business? He just read it. it. But we didn't define it. We talked about what it looks like. We talked about walk-in business, we talked about walk-up business, we talked about bakers, we talked about coffee shops, we talked about banks, we talked about financial institutes. We talked about a lot of things, but we didn't define what retail is. The DRD is defined by the business of Okay, so again, though, I think what his question was, and I'm speaking to that, is how do we define retail? Okay, and then I, again, my question is, if it's not in that section, I, I, I guess I would have to Google that. That's what most people go off these days, right? How do we define retail? It's a walk-in type of business. Ours is defined right in the what he just read. And if it's not in what he just read, it's not a, approved. You have your phone in front of you. Can you Google, can you Google a retail business No, I don't me? have to Google it. It's written right in our ordinance right there. Well, it can be written in ordinance, but all we did was define examples of a retail type business. We didn't define retail business. I think we did with what he said right there. A, a laundromat is not included. I, I don't think we defined a retail business. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we defined that. Or services, when we talk about a bank, right? Or a laundromat, or a bakery, or a tailor, or 
a bar that sells a drink or, um, you know, I, I think we have a lot of retail services on that main strip. I think we do. So that's my question is how do we define retail? Correct, but do we call that retail? Because it's a service. It's a, service. It's a sold service. <clears throat> so I guess that's my question, and I'm speaking to his question, is how do we define retail? He didn't say what is retail. He didn't say in our section whatever, and I can't speak to that because I don't know. Um, but okay, I, I, I Googled it. What's that look like? <laughs> Examples of retail laundry and it's retail laundry and dry cleaning outlets, but not including laundry and dry cleaning plants, and not including coin operated laundries and dry cleaning establishments, com commonly called laundromats and laundrettes. So, what's the definition of retail? Well, I'm just reading, I Googled, is a, is a laundromat considered retail? And what I get on Google is no. Okay, is, it, is an attorney's office considered retail? No, it's an There's office. one on the main drag. It's between 1860 and Heist. Well, if they came, been there for they've years. Been grand, they've been yeah, and if they came in. before us, we would say <clears throat> they would be at the same standard as you, which would be that's a conditional use. Do we? And we would vote yay or nay whether we wanted that conditional use. <clears throat> And I think that's a fair shake, and that's why my question is, what is retail? The next question I have is, who else is going to develop that building? I've had calls. Everyone's put a service station back in there. I can leave it vacant. We can let the paint fall off of it. It doesn't matter to me. I want to do something to add to the community. I've had old folks that are close to that area that walked up and said, what do you think you want to do? And I said, I think we're, we're talking about maybe putting a laundromat in, right? It's passive income. It's something that we can monitor. We can make the building nice again. It, it creates some tax base, right, with the income that we create there. Um, I think it's a hard push to have a bunch of buildings on a main drag and everybody wants this beautiful downtown. Where, where's, where's the tax dollars? Where's the, you know, everybody says, well, well, there's money if you write this, this, or, or there's money there, 2,500, three grand for this. Everybody knows that does anything with a property, $2,500 doesn't go anywhere. Homeowners know that, right? So with that said, do we leave it vacant or do we do something with it? That's my question. It's not for sale. It's not for sale. How do we, the motion should be That's your motion? Okay, yeah. I make motion to approve. Mr. McMurdo? Oh, you need a second, don't you? Oh, yes, I need a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. I'll second to approve. Okay, Mr. Graff? No. Uh, Mr. Wilson? No. Ms. Knock? Nay. Mr. McMurdo? Nay. Motion not approved. Well, that's a recommendation to council. Nay. So yes, a recommendation to council. So this will go to city council. So when's that meeting? Um it'll be uh, we discuss at the next city council meeting. Uh, it, it actually will be next one will be the one. Okay. Uh, it'll eventually come to council. And council will either affirm the <coughs> vote here, or if they want to have it there, a super majority of five would have to vote to approve it. Okay, and then and then if they don't approve it, who do who where, what do we do there? Gotcha. No, I get that. I just when when is that meeting? I I just need to know that. It's the 18th. 18th. Are you sure it's going to be 
April 18th. Can you make sure you shoot me an email on that one? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll make sure I'm here for that. I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. You guys have a good night. Thank you, Joe. All right, next on our agenda is 10264 Harrison Avenue, the used car lot. We could get the uh, staff report on that, please. Yes. Um, this is coming before the board um, because all proposed conditional uses are reviewed by Planning Commission for approval per section 114306 of the Harrison Zoning Regulations. Um, the applicant is requesting a conditional use approval to open a small used truck lot at this location. This application must be reviewed and approved by Planning Commission per section 114306, uh, which lists automotive sales and service as a conditional use in a B general business zone. Um, the building at 10264 Harrison Avenue was previously a single family residence that is now used for business. The applicant opened the business without filing any filing any zoning use applications and was notified by the building and zoning department that the process included an application to be considered by planning commission. His continued operation depends on the recommended recommended approval by PC. No, only in the BRD. Oh, okay, that's right. I'm sorry. Only in the BRD. Um, the applicant is proposing to open a used truck lot at the location. Queen City Motors has been in business since 1991 and has another location in Loveland, Ohio. The site is located between the Schultz development property and an auto body repair shop, which is Randy Lane's. Um, the owner of the location sees this conditional use request as an asset to the city of Harrison by bringing new clients to this location and helping the surrounding companies generate business. The use is similar to the others in the area and would not detract from the surroundings. Approval of the conditional use would require building and zoning permits to be reviewed and approved per the Harrison zoning regulations. Um, if Planning Commission makes a positive, well, if Planning Commission approves this application for the used truck lot, um, our staff recommends the following conditions be submitted as conditions of the approval. The business will pave all car truck display areas. No cars or trucks will be parked on grass areas or within the public rights of way. Sign applications will be submitted and approved um, per code. No signs or banners will be placed on the fence facing I-74. Any changes to the exterior of the building will be approved by building and zoning before initiated, and the business will adhere to all B business zoning regulations. Mr. Chairman, I would move for the approval with the stipulation that those six conditions are met. I'll second that. And under discussion, there, as everyone knows, if you know where this is at, uh, Randy Lane's auto body, which Randy Lane don't own anymore, but. Randy Auto Body is in the middle. This building is on the left, and then there's a used car lot on the right. So I think it meets everything that's out there right now. It's and it's set up against Schultz's foundation. And by the way, Randy Lane's company, that company that is there, this yeah, they own the house. Anything else? Okay, Miss Knock. Yay. Mr. McMurdo. Yay. Mr. Graff. Yay. And Mr. Wilson. Yay. Okay, motion approved with conditions. Okay. And finally, we have the uh, zone change from R0 to R1 with a PUD dash REZ RES overlay on a Carolina Trace. This is the Oakland Hills residential development. If we could get the staff report for this. Um, I think we need to get at least some of this in the record because mm -hmm. the um, public hearing is not an official record of our meeting. Okay. Um, and again, just to highlight it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this was talked about in our public hearing section. Um, all propo proposed zone changes with a PUD overlay are approved by Planning Commission and City Council per Section 113904 of the Harrison Zoning Regulations. Uh, the applicant is requesting approval to change the zoning on the property from R0 to R1 with a PUD RES overlay. The zoning change in plan unit development designation requires approval from Planning Commission and City Council. The submi submission represents the preliminary plan. The Planning Commission would make a recommendation with or without stipulations to City Council for its approval or denial. City Council would then consider this as a preliminary submission and either approve with stipulations or deny. 
a city council approval of the preliminary plan with or without stipulations would then require the applicant to return to planning commission for consideration of a final plan planning commission would then make a recommendation to city council for their consideration of the final plan city council's denial of this preliminary plan would result would result in the measure failing and the applicant waiting at least six months before a new preliminary plan may be submitted to planning commission um, Oaken Hills development is requesting to establish a PUD with the intent to create 252 home master plan community um, we've gone over all of the lots um, there will be different areas uh, single-family buildings would be similar in quality and scope to those examples provided which you've all seen tonight um, pedestrian access and circulation sidewalks will be constructed along the street in front of each home and at the time of construction except for the 10 custom lots uh, vehicular access and circulation all streets except for the 10 custom homes shall be public and maintained by the city of Harrison and street parking would be allowed the streets for the 10 custom homes may be private and maintained by the HOA access to most homes would provide a minimum of four parking parking spaces consisting of garage driveway and off street spaces parking would also be provided in the amenity areas um, lighting street lighting would be provided throughout the site using standard street lights um, these are specifically designed to prevent excess light pollution entry features trees and other landscape features would be illuminated using low voltage landscape lighting amenity areas would feature additional landscape lighting for safety and aesthetics uh, landscaping yard trees would be installed per the residential PUD agreement and the amenity areas would be professionally designed and landscaped entry features in the frontage along Carolina Trace Road would be landscaped to provide an, an attractive front door to the community existing trees in each section would be preserved more landscape information will be provided later in this report um, trash containers trash and garbage will be placed in individual sanitary containers stored inside and shall not be permitted to remain in the public view except on days of trash collection the amenity areas would use residential type sanitary conditions that would also remain shielded from public view except on days of trash collection no permanent dumpsters are permitted in the community this condition does not apply to temporary dumpsters being used on lots owned by the developer or a builder while construction is actively taking place um, homeowners association consisting of all dwelling unit lot owners is required to be established for the entire PUD the HOA for the PUD shall own and maintain all common areas facilities and amenities the HOA board would review and approve any architectural modifications or site improvement the HOA would maintain any landscaping fencing and monument signs located within the right-of-way uh, the traffic study provided by choice one engineering uh, was attached and given to the members um, recommendations are on page 8 of the report and have been reviewed and confirmed by the city's contract engineer JMA um, a ground mounted sign is proposed for the entrance to the property along with custom street and stop signs throughout the community trail and amenity signs are also proposed and would match the design of the community um, the, the amenities which were talked about earlier uh, would include in internal trails dog parks and possibly a pickleball court that promote individuals and families um, having time together um, let's see this is the list you want me to read the list of specifications that they corrected um, now if you could uh, let's just put in that um, all specs recommended by um, okay. by uh, building department have been complied with with I think without exception haven't they or uh, or were there uh, some maybe just let's read just the ones that yeah, read it read it the ones that have not been corrected okay um, and, and a lot of this was gone over in the public mm -hmm. hearing also correct um, so the items that were not corrected at the time of the report uh, the water department requested an area depicted with an easement for a future booster pump station south of hatch court and east of carolina trace um actually that was corrected i apologize um let's see <laughs> a valve would be needed to separate the high pressure zone from the township elevated tower and the low pressure zone from new haven road that would be in the final plan um yeah 
yeah, under landscape. Yeah, the landscape plans do not provide sufficient detail as required in Harrison Codified Ordinances, Chapter 1167. Uh, trees may not be in rights of way, must be in yards. Uh, that correction is still needed. Plantings along the entirety of the villa is north boundary, regardless of existing tree line. Right, that was corrected in the public hearing. Um, the HOA document does not contain all the exhibits. That'll be corrected in the final plan, or would be. Um, to, uh, we requested that the townhomes, all siding, shall be fiber cement. That was not corrected. Um, townhome entry wraps. Text needs corrected to depict that first two buildings on each side of the entry will be wrapped with water table. Um, Let's see, examples of re uh, rear, sorry. They did They're provided that tonight. Um, and they provided the line of sight. Okay, all of this was addressed in the public hearing. Shannon, is there anything else you want me to touch on? This was all done in the public hearing. basically treated as an M1 zoning, um, and I think a lot of the residents uh, in that area were very concerned at that time, uh, and we listened to them about that concern, because we didn't know, we really didn't have a plan that was submitted to us for consideration as part of the JET application, so we couldn't really deal with that. We only knew that there could be other uses besides uh, uh, a uh, retirement facility. 
Um, if Planning Commission makes a positive recommendation to City Council for preliminary approval of the RO zoning de designation being changed to the R1 zoning designation with the PUD res overlay, we recommend the following conditions to be submitted as part of the final development plan. Uh, the request in the outline above highlighted in red would be corrected and provided. Home sites numbers 40 through 70 in the villa section would be at least one third of an acre. All other villa home sites would be at least one quarter of an acre. All signage throughout the community would be reviewed and approved by the building and zoning department. All items in the attached PUD text with corrections would become part of the approved application. All changes would be would require a second review by Planning Commission and City Council in a final development format. I do. So, in, in the conditions that were put in there, uh, number two uh, asked for lots 40 through 70 to be. Uh, a certain size and then the balance sorry um, I don't know that our materials labeled 40 through 70 it's, a, it's the ones in front of in front of uh, facing Carolina Trace and then the ones facing Land Hill South okay. all the way to the corner so oh. here that's correct. correct that's correct okay. so that whole L Okay. So the whole okay. great. Yeah. And so what we've already increased the size considerably for <clears throat> two thirds of that area, uh, all but maybe ten of those lots or twelve of those lots. Um, to increase all of those to be, we, I think it's a, I don't have it here in front of me. A quarter acre. A third. A third. One third for all of those, and everything else to be a quarter uh, would cause us to lose probably another 30 lots and so that's not something that that we would be able to agree to uh, we've agreed to everything else through this whole process but we're not able to agree we're not we're not able to agree to that because it, it just it it's it's a math equation to a certain extent and and it would cause us too much financial harm to be able to proceed with the development losing those so what we what we could do is if it's a perimeter thing I mean we could we could increase the size of the ones that we didn't on the north boundary uh, to 70 foot um, which would be uh, the ones that are along the trees just yeah uh, as she's as, as Miss Knox pointing out um, sorry I don't have a diagram to be able to show but we could increase those sizes to 70 foot in width, um, which would cause us to lose some lots, but. Uh, that would be 11 of them. That would be 11 of them. Sounds about right. Let me ask you a question. Uh, I'm just curious. All the homes that are going to be built, that you're proposing to build on the golf course side, mm -hmm. how wide are those? Those are 55 foot wide. So they're 25 foot narrower than the houses that are currently on Harmony Drive. Right. But the homes aren't probably quite as wide. They might be deeper than those on Harmony, but they're probably not quite as wide because on Harmony Drive, there are homes that are within close to 15 feet apart, and we would be no closer than 15 feet apart with ours. So the houses will fit the lot, I guess, is my point. And it's not every home on Harmony, but there are some that are, are getting close to that 15 foot I didn't go with the tape measure to be exact but what what is your smallest lot size as far as acreage 55 to 120 in it as far as acreage yes, on it's 55 to 120 to 0.152 one sixth of an acre it's how it's how what about is about a sixth of a sixth of an acre 0.152 so you're putting 6.6 .6 houses per acre no, not not that's not necessarily true because we have right away and yeah. open space and all that. Space, right? So, the about it's about this. It's about. I mean that that is a prototypical size for what we've had again down the street with our villa product that we've done, uh, that we've shown pictures of and all that. I just again uh, the 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 houses on the uh, west side of Carolina Trace. Um, 
I don't, I don't have a whole lot of problem with that area, except I don't like vinyl on any of it. <laughs> Because I think it makes it look cheap, and that there's no way in the hell that I would vote. Let me, let me, let me, yes. There's no way I would consider voting approval of this if there's vinyl siding up there. And as because I I've said, seen uh, enough of that on, out on New Haven Road, and it's almost repulsive to drive down New Haven Road and look at them houses. I, I can't believe that many people bought them. And so, and so we've no, accepted no vinyl. That. No vinyl. Okay. That's what that's what we're speaking to. In, in your I'm sorry. Your final final final. Okay. So number two is the only one I would like to alter. I, I, I heard you saying, Jerry. I didn't hear anything else. But there's going to be no vinyl on them either. Me? There's no vinyl on them either. No, 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 no. We do know for sure because we're not going to prove it if there's vinyl. Right? Your, your vision's better than mine. <laughs> your vision must be a lot better than mine. I can't see what's across the street from me. I, ex I expect to see uh, that, I'll call it lot number one, right there on the corner of, of, the, of the entryway, all the way around to lot number 28. I expect to see all those a third of an acre. I was going to say, uh, to, to, answer, to answer your question, we're not voting on anything yet because we don't have a motion in front of us. That's right. But yeah, because, because the motion will be tailored to what we're going to, yeah. Well, for the purpose of discussion then, uh, and put all your guns away because you haven't heard my vote. But I would move we approve what's here. Now remember, we got to vote on it. We did the same thing with the uh, laundromat. Okay? So in order to have a discussion, otherwise we can continue talking the rest of the night. But uh, we need a motion on the floor to either uh, recommend to the council or not recommend. So I'll move that we recommend to council to approve. I'll second. second. And I think we've had plenty of discussion the whole night. So with that being said, I will call for the question on the vote. Um, I, th I think Jerry wants to vote with the recommendations as presented in the staff report, correct? Well, I, I do want to I, I do want to uh, put the provision in there that there's no vinyl. That's anywhere it's in there in the project it's in there it's in and there. I do want to put that the lots one through 28 I believe it is 40 through 70 40 through 70 so there's 28 lots 28 28 or 29 lots that they would all be one-third of an acre so that will be that will be the ex what's that yeah I like to see them be bigger but um, I on the golf course all be a third of an acre. Why not do it all the way around to the outside? Um, and, and we've come on. What if we do is walk away? Right. Um, right now, I'm hearing for discussion purposes that your smallest lot is about a sixth of an acre, and we've got in our staff report um, a suggestion that Jerry has put forth that everything be a third of an acre. Yeah, that's not correct. A third of an acre only on... On, on those... Only on the lots oh, facing Carolina those, Trace and facing Land Hill South. Facing Land Hill South. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to throw it out there for Go ahead. members of council in the vote. Is there an in-between? 
that would be acceptable perhaps to Mr. Wilson and to the developer? Well, what, what, what I had proposed was, and I thought there would be an in-between from where we are today to what was in the staff report, is that if we, we made the balance of those lots, which is roughly 11 of them, they would probably turn into seven of them. So we'd lose four more lots and make them 70 foot wide lots down through there, which would increase the size, getting it close. It wouldn't be probably quite a third of an acre, um, but it would increase that size. And we have common space back behind those lots, right? There's a 20 foot common space that's right, in, right behind those that is virtually part of the lot, but we put it in common so the homeowner association could make, make sure that the buffer trees were alive. Again, the whole place is all mowed all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it, from a maintenance standpoint, it doesn't make any difference. We were just making sure that if those trees died in the future, that the HOA could replace them and not have to worry about the homeowner barking about it. So, so, yeah, so, so what, it, what I'm, I guess what I'm saying to you is that the lots are really 20 feet deeper. We just made it common area though, so we could make sure we maintain the tree buffer. Okay, so what, what you're saying, I, I think, is along this boundary right here you could you could live with going from 11 down to seven by making them basically we're going to make them 70 foot wide lots right down by making there. them 75 foot lots but then to get the acreage you would need to take out that buffer area and make that part of the lot if if so desired yes but we could right okay i'm just trying to explain yeah. why mm -hmm. they're smaller because of that so i'm not i'm not a math genius but uh, how how many lots would you lose if you made a minimum 70 foot wide of all of them? We were talking about it earlier, 35 to 40. Okay. I have no problem with that, do you? Yep, I do. Okay. <laughs> Just being honest. You know my position. <laughs> no vinyl. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and I guess um, that's the thing, too, is we've got one recommendation to council, I think. So... Um, well, if anybody wants to amend my motion, right, right, you can right, do right. that. No, and, and, and I'm just, yeah, I'm just... You can, you can amend the motion I made that's already been seconded. You can uh, mo uh, move to amend it, and then all you'd have to do is vote on the amendment and get approved, and then vote on the motion as amended. Okay, so I will, I will make a motion to amend Jerry's motion to um, require those 11 lots along there to be reconfigured down to seven to have the 70 foot width on those. No, they're, no. they're the ones that I back up against. Long Carolina uh, Trace are already wider. These are the ones facing Land Hill South. The, yeah, these, Land Hill these, South. These small 11 ones down here will be seven. Was, yeah, was that clear? Yeah, the other ones that are already been enlarged, ma'am. Those are already 75 to 90 foot long. From where to where? No, on the, she said Carolina Trace. You gotta count them. I can't hear you, buddy. But it's right now, unless he amends it. I don't think any of them are actually a sixth on the golf course side. Unless they amend it. Somewhere in here, right? Those will be about 55 foot wide. 25 foot less than yours. Well, as far as now, the to be honest goes. with you, not really, because you've got the entire golf course between those houses and yours. They, Land Hill South, don't have that luxury. They, they <laughs> but what was your amendment? Um, For those 11 lots? 11 lots. It'll be down to seven because you'll lose four of them. Right. Not to me it didn't. Not to me it didn't. We're talking about that first lot on the corner all the way around to the 
28th lot being a third of an acre. Didn't say anything. That's what I said. I'd like to get. That's why I said I'd like to get approved. But okay. I don't necessarily think we're accommodating him because he just said he'd lose thirty some lots, which he. If you go to, no, he said if you go to, if, I go, if we tell him you go to 70 foot wide on all of them, he said we'd lose about 31 or 32 lots. That's what he, can, I, can I help clarify what's been said so far, please? So, Mr. Wilson made, made a motion, right? Mr. Graff, is, which was seconded, Mr. Graff has now made his motion to amend Mr. Wilson's motion. And his motion is to require us to enlarge the lots that have not already been enlarged in the past that are going to be at least 70 feet wide, approximately 11 to 7, right, on the north boundary on the eastern side of the villas. So that's what Mr. Graff has... It's going to be less than a third. Yeah, it's going to be, again. That depends on which lot. It depends on if it's got any radius. I can't, that mean it depends if we include the common area back there. 8,400 square so. feet. We can accept it and then we can vote. Right. Which we is need to, we need a pretty close to, when you, when you figure the uh, loss of, because of easements yeah, and everything I'm else. I'm a little, I'm a little confused. So are we not, are we just foregoing number two on the recommendations Fifth and, and amending it Without for yours instead? I don't know why there's. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Because right. they said they were not agreed to that. How many you got planned right now, the way it is, on the 40 acres? 133. That, that it doesn't work out that way because of right away and other things. So, the third, right, that's green space, but then you have right away. So, no, it's more than that. about 37 lots. Uh, 36 to 37, depending on how they work out. In, uh, in the about this What's this neighborhood called? What's what? That's a lot more that you could build unless we, uh, if we enforce the acre, one acre per, you're building a hell of a lot more houses doing that theory than you would the one acre per. Because you'd have less than 40. And I understand your business. I understand Infrastructure that. costs of what's going in, it just Sold real estate the math for a doesn't long work. Time. Yeah. I, so, as a reminder, we, we, we started at 281, went to 283, went down to 260, then we went down to 252 for you this evening, and now another four down from there. At the beginning of the evening, we were 252. Now we're down to 248. So just to put it in perspective, we've given 33 lots at this point in time, which would be the approximate 12 to 13 percent of our development. Just 
With no open space requirement, correct? I'm sorry? With no open space requirement, correct? Or amenities. Or amenities. Or trails. Or trails. So I, uh, if I could reword my amendment, um, we, we replace number two in the staff recommendations with the following. All lots in the northeast corner of the village villas section which abut the Land Hill South development shall be 70 feet minimum in width. <laughs> you're talking about the ones here, right here? Should be a third of an acre, what you should say. Well, a again, you're saying a third of an acre. That's a deal breaker for them. I'm suggesting that we that we suggest. I don't think it's a deal breaker on them just on those. It's a deal breaker for them. If uh, we'll, we tell we'll, them well, we'll lose another two or three with that calculation? I think you'd lose four, I think. No, we lose four with the 70 foot. We would lose, we'd lose, well, we would want to take the common area back and make it part of the lot since it's kind of functioning as part of the lot. So, I mean, that's the thing here, right? You guys are talking about s square feet of a, of a lot and you're talking about the backyard. The front yard's gonna be still where it is. The back of the home's still where it's gonna be. We have 20 feet of common space that's not part of the lot but it kind of functions as part of the lot. So, I mean, we're kind of, I don't wanna say we're mincing words here, but it's a 70 foot wide lot's gonna give us, with a 40 foot house, is gonna give us 15 foot side yard. It's gonna give 30 feet in between the homes. That's more than the homes in Harmony. Because the lots, the homes are only gonna be 40 feet wide that we build in there. Twelve more. Twelve, yes, twelve would be the loss. You go from uh, two fifty two to two forty. However, it has been so I actually do that and do use twelve along Fern Hill South or to an extent Fern Hill South. Right. So that would be two that would be two forty versus our original two eighty. Right, because of radiuses. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there was not an absolute consistency of no third of an acre uh, along some of the different lots, some of the different more. Uh, but if you wanted to do R1, again, that's 0.29 acres. Uh, but if you wanted to take away a third, that's 0.33. So, so 0.33 would make them lose 12 lots along the lot. area. But the lots of uh, lots of uh, that abut the golf course, you're saying that you can't change that from 55 to 70 or 80 foot. Financially, no. I mean, there's, I mean, it's in its side yard, right? The homes are still going to be 40 feet, right? And so if, if we're at if we're at 55 feet, we're 15 feet in between the houses. If we're at 70 feet, we're 30 feet in between the houses. And that side yard isn't what most people want, right? The, the side yard doesn't typically benefit a homeowner very much. It's the front yard and the rear yard. And, you know, it, it's most every other lifestyle, as we call it, development that we've ever done has been in the 50 to 60 foot range. And, and we're in that. We, we're smack dab. That's, that's the sweet spot for, um, for this type of product because the folks are, they're living out their backyard and and they're going to go play golf, and they're going to pack them, go to Florida, and they're going to do all that stuff. So the nice thing about having a little wider lot is you don't get into the problem I got into when I built a shed, and my one good friend who's a contractor told me I had to be at least three foot off the fence line. So I built a damn shed, and I found out that I had to be six feet off the <laughs> fence line, and I put in a $5,000 shed with lighting and everything else yeah. in it. 
You know what the, you know what the good news but is the here? Bad news, well, the bad news you is you can't if, build a shed in our neighborhood. We won't allow sheds. I don't like that either. <laughs> but, but they don't need a lawnmower to stash in it because we're taking care of the grounds. I got a shed you can have a workshop in. But if I had, if, if, my lot was only, if my lot was only 55 foot lot wide, that shed would sit in the middle of my backyard. Right, but that's part of the I thing is that. that we don't have sheds, we don't have play sets, we don't have trampolines. Okay. There won't be any kids in that part of the development, sir. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go ahead, and I, I think we need to just take a vote. Um, Second it. Yeah. And, um, excuse uh, me, folks, go, folks, folks. I think we need to take a vote. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. So we can get, so you can hear what we're voting, yes or no. Um, I'm going to uh, second Andy's uh, motion, um, and then that'll require us to go ahead and. You had yes to vote no. on the amendment then. Yep. Yes. My amendment is to um, amend Jerry's motion. Um, to replace item two with the following. All lots in the northeast corner of the village, villas section which abut the Land Hill South development shall be a minimum of 70 feet in width. Now, what about Carolina Trace? I think Carolina Trace is Again, that's my, that, is, that is my amendment. I guess my only question to that is to you guys, if I'm going to signify that one lot on the corner being number one, uh, those ones that face Carolina Trace all the way down, aren't those a third of an acre? Okay. All right. So, so in other words, if they're over 70 feet, with his, set, with his uh, amendment, you could reduce them to 70 feet. I'm just... I got you. So we've got a second. Yep. All right. So now just procedurally, we vote on the amendment vote first. On the amendment, and then you vote on the motion okay. as amended. Right. So that if my amendment fails, then we vote on Jerry's original. That's correct. Okay, just so we're all clear. Yes, it's addressed. Out, the request in the outline aligned, highlighted in red will be corrected. So that in number one, it is stating that those will be corrected. No vinyl. And no matter how this vote goes, I mean, if, if, it's, if his amendment is approved and my motion is approved, we then vote if we want to recommend that to council. Everybody understand? Just like we did with the laundromat. The motion was made to approve it, but then when we voted, if we're going to recommend it to council, it was voted down, right? So that's where we're at here. So we're going to need actually, you know, three votes. Go ahead. Here the balls. <laughs> okay. So on accepting the amendment, someone needs to make a motion on that because you already made it. We already it's already motion's made. already been made and seconded. Okay, so that's what you did. Okay. Yes, so we're voting. Miss Knock. Nay. Uh, Mr. Rockmardo. Nay. Mr. Goff. Yay. I didn't hear the other two votes. Nay. Nays. Nay. Mr. Wilson. I don't understand why we're doing that. <laughs> you know what? What you don't understand is regardless of how I vote now, is when we vote on my motion is what's going to make the difference. Because we can vote on all this now and vote it down. When it comes to my motion, it's got to be voted for or against to go recommend to council. So for the purpose of that, I'll vote along with the chairman and say yay. And you'll figure it all out in just a second. Don't get nervous. So on the original Now you got to vote on. Well, it now, wasn't a 
amended. Now, now it's not amended. Okay, so now you vote on the motion. Right. In the original motion, someone should probably state that. A recommendation to city council. Hell, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got it if you don't, Jerry. I, I, well, I, I, I made the motion to approve this with the stipulation. Stipulations. Wasn't what was in that motion, but okay. Well, I want to make sure I understand what your motion was. So it was for increasing all of those around the perimeter. That's correct. Correct. No vinyl. No vinyl. <laughs> and then the balance of the, of the um, number two is it is correct. The balance of the doors two is it is remain it. as they are. Is that correct? That's correct. That's what the motion was, and I'm going to stick with it. Well, we can, I mean, hopefully somebody's recording it, and you know, I can get the transcript, but, I mean, the original language was quarter of an acre, quarter of an acre small. And then there was a spectrum. That on, on our sheet is the staff report, which I think Jerry's motion was as written in our staff report. So that that's where we get clarity on that. That is what the staff report says. That's what the staff report says. That's the motion. Then. Correct. Okay, so so Jerry made the motion. All right, Miss Knock, on the original motion. On the original, this yay. Uh, Mr. McMurdo. Uh, nay. Mr. Graff. Um, I, I think your conditions. I've got no problem with those. Yay. And Mr. Wilson. Yay. So that was a motion for a favorable recommend recommendation to City Council. To City Council with those yes with, with the conditions. conditions listed in the staff. What now? As 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 written in the staff. No. Well, not approved. That is an, actually that is an approval to yeah. do. That would go to council with that with that with that approval. That's so that's just approved by it as amended. So the vote on that, correct me if I'm wrong, the vote to uh, make that amendment and to get it ready for draft passed. So it doesn't pass. No, it actually makes it go to the goes to the applicant and then um, a two two. It's recommended to council's approval on, on the motion for a vote to two to two. Because it's tied it, it always goes to the applicant. Okay, then then I think we've got got an issue here because I think at least I thought um, that it, my amendment was denied and so that when we had that second vote everyone thought we were voting on Jerry's original motion which is not correct so therefore I'm going to make a motion for a revote on both motions so that everyone's intentions are very clear and everyone recognizes We didn't, we didn't have a motion seconded from Brian. Seconded did. so we could vote. Yeah, he Brian seconded my motion. Yeah, there was a vote on that motion. And he approved. Right. And at least I thought that that meant. He's right. He's right. That it goes to the applicant. Okay. Well, let me 
me put it another way. Does anyone? I'm happy either way. I'm, I'm voting no. I'm voting no. Are you? Are you? Would Would you change your vote if they wrapped all the way around with the the same acreage? Um, but as far as changing my vote from yes to no. Uh, okay. Again, if, if if everyone's fine with the way we, I'm fine with the way we voted. I can not be confused how I how I voted now. Right, but you can't. There's what do we approve? What do we approve? Vote that we took, I right? thought we I thought we were going to move on this yeah. on the on the uh, yeah. project, and then we were going to vote if we recommended it to city council. So that, so, so it, it, that's fine, but when we voted on that second one, I thought we were voting on Jerry's original motion as unamended. Do you think when we voted that let's second do, vote that we were doing yours? Let's do it, let's do it this way. I move we reconsider the project. And we need a second to do that. people aren't going to want the width. They don't want it to get long either. Right. Yeah. The yeah. staff report, did it say a quarter acre? On every, the all staff of report says 40 through 70. Members of the plan commission. A third of an acre and the rest are a quarter of an acre. Okay. Um, everyone, can I, can I, whoops. Can we get some, can we get everyone's attention here, please? Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Members of the plan commission, can we uh, request a table? Is that the official term? Not a continuance. Well, if we, if, if we vote on the staff's recommendation of a third of an acre for those outlying, Carolina Trace and, what's, and the uh, Land Hill South, and the staff report says all other lots are a quarter of an acre, if we vote on that and, and approve that and recommend that to city council, uh, your company's going to have a decision to make if you want to do the project or not. Correct? Correct. But I'd rather let us go do the homework and be able to come back with better information and then have you vote. Uh, people, come on. Hey, 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 Show hey, some hey, 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 Come on. He, he, yes. These guys have been pretty nice coming out here and get, getting hell from us for months, years. But, but, it, there's, but, uh, so, so, uh, I have that right, I believe, to ask for a table, correct? No. I Listen, don't. The board here, the board here has to make the move to table. Okay. The audience can't move the table of anything. No way to, okay. I figured there would be a continuous I mean, deal. Robert's Rules of Order state that the board here, okay. one of us Fair. four, can move to table. 
Uh, if, if one of us do that, it's non-debatable and it votes. No discussion, nothing. Okay. So if one of them want to do that, I would, I would just soon vote on what we've got. And if your company wants to come back with a different plan showing uh, less lots, wider lots, that's your option. But we've been on this for what, two years? Uh, and I don't think these people's opinion is going to change. And uh, I happen to sit on city council and Understand. I'm, I support the residents of my city as I should, uh, unless, they, unless they really get dumb, which I don't believe anybody in here is. Uh, so I would, I would move we, we vote on if we're going to recommend this to city council or not. Um, since I hear you, Jerry, um, I'm going to make the motion um, to table it uh, simply because. Uh, can I talk, folks? I've simply because these folks have came in; they've spent a year and a half, um, approximately. Two. Two. Okay, trying to work on this. Um, we're down. They, they've they've done everything that um, planning commission yeah but or the, the since, building, the building to everything. since you made a motion to table there is no discussion and you right. call for a vote we'll call for a vote oh, well I'm sorry we can't I need a second no the motion to table doesn't need a second I'll see just motion doesn't need a second it's non-debatable and you just vote okay, okay. mr. Wilson we're voting to whether to table, table the item or not. Yay. Ms. Knock. Nay. Mr. McMurdo. Nay. Mr. Graff. Yay. That's it. So it is uh, table. Correct. Two yes. Yep. I think there was three yeses, wasn't there? There's three yeses. I said nay. You said nay and you said nay. Yeah. Nay. 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 Okay. No. Nay. Okay. So let's do two. So it's table. Uh, so let's do two. So it's table. Uh, so let's do two. Yay. 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 Mr. Graff was a yay. Mr. Wilson was a yay. Ms. Knock was a nay. And Mr. McMurdo was a nay. No. You, you have tabled it. There Correct. Is there is no recommendation. There is, recommendation. there is no recommendation. They have the ability to go back to the drawing board and uh, recalculate, rewrite, 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 feasible for them to do it to make the kind of money they need to make then they won't be coming back but if they do they'll come back to us we'll have the meeting again and see what they present I think that's fair I think we understand that I think you did. You're welcome. By the way, the next time we have this meeting, I'm going to ask the mayor if we can have it down at the American Legion Hall where we can seat 300 people. I want everybody to be in there. We're still in a meeting here, folks. Hey, folks, folks, we're still in a meeting here. If, if you could hold on for a couple more minutes. A motion to adjourn? Guess not. Yeah. You got, an, you got an agenda. We we completed your agenda, didn't we? I would hope. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. We're adjourned. Oh, good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you too. Thank you. Um, I'd like your to input. make a motion to adjourn. I'll Appreciate second. <laughs> Mr. Wilson. Yay. I was going to stay here all night. Ms. Knock. Of what they did. Uh, yay. Mr. McMurdo. Okay. Mr. Graff. Hey, you're going to have to kiss him. He's coming to see if he can table.